Hey everybody, PC Outcast here, back with more Everlasting Summer. I don't know what time it was when Olga woke me up, but even before opening my eyes, I felt the imminence of death. My whole body ached. I felt dizzy. My mind was clouded by haze. Semyon, wake up immediately or you'll miss breakfast and more importantly, the lineup. Looks like the camp leader intends to exploit me to the fullest today, the same as any other day. I garbled something, covered my head with a blanket, and turned to the wall. In the end, Olga's anger will never go beyond words. At least I really wanted to believe so, then. Stand up right now, or... Or what? I was going to say triumphantly, but kept silent. Not because of fear, just because I felt too lazy to open my mouth. Really, what could she do to me? Lecture me at the lineup? Hang my photo on the wall of shame? Or use me for inhuman alien experiments. Well, I'm ready for that too. Just let me sleep a couple of hours. Okay, but if you miss the lineup... The door slammed behind the camp leader and the sleep which had been about to fade claimed my mind again. I woke up dazzled by sunlight. It was 1 p.m. according to my cell phone which was squeeze, squeezing the last drops of charge out of its battery. Strangely enough, my body didn't ache. My head felt clearer, and all in all, it was a good beginning to the day. After waving my arms, pretending to do early exercises, I sprang out of the cabin and headed to the washstands. Yeah, I slept through breakfast, but will be served lunch soon, so I shouldn't worry that I'll have to stay hungry like I did yesterday. Really? Lunch? After 1 p.m.? <clears throat> Interesting. Along the way, I met a pioneer whose face somehow looked strangely familiar. Mm, yeah. But it was going so fast, I couldn't really see him. And when I turned around, he was already gone around the corner. Well, that's odd. There was nobody near the washstands. Everybody, everyone was probably busy with Olga's tasks and God knows what else. I quickly brushed my teeth, washed my face, and was already going to leave when I suddenly heard the sound of water flowing from the opposite tap. Oh dear. And he's got no eyes. Just kind of holes. A pioneer leaned against a washstand over there. I couldn't see his face, but judging by his figure, he looked like the one I saw a couple of minutes ago. Pioneer. How are you doing? The sun's so bright today. I looked up into the sky, shielding my eyes with my palm. Yeah, nothing special. It wasn't easy to get a better look at the pioneer, given the way he stood. The bright sunlight that reflected from the water and shiny metal surfaces of washstands heavily obscured his face, and I wasn't able to distinguish a single single feature. The camp leader's angry today. So angry. His voice sounded painfully familiar, too. Well, she's always like that. Well, you'd know better, yeah. I tried to remember if I'd ever heard this voice or seen this pioneer before. Well, see ya. He turned the water off and quickly marched towards the forest path. For a second I thought of following him, stopping him, but I quickly fought it off, as I decided that it's not worth spoiling such a great morning with suspicions and burdensome speculations. Nature was glowing with a bright light of life, lush tree trop tree tree trops. Tree chop <laughs> <laughs> Tree tops were rhythmically swell swaying in the wind, whispering to each other. The breeze gently stroked the high emerald grass. Birds were cooing in the shade, escaping the midday heat. The woods and fields stretching beyond the horizon were dissolving in warm sunlight. I don't know which month it is now, but it looks like midsummer. I distinctly remembered the summer vacations of my childhood and youth. Times of fun and leisure, carefree joy. Childhood games, how many there were. I wouldn't say no to playing war games or hide and seek now, or swinging on a bungee. Or maybe building a sandcastle and inhabiting it with toy soldiers, ready to defend their master to the last drop of their plastic blood. Ah. I went to the square and sat on the bench, waiting for lunch. It looked like there wasn't much time left before it. From time to time, pioneers passed me, sometimes alone, sometimes in pairs or groups of three, but always someone I didn't know. Alyssa, Yolanda, Lena, or Slavia were nowhere to be seen. 
Thoughts about the meaninglessness of existence were circling in my brain, but this didn't worry me on such a beautiful day. Just think about it. Who could think of grieving for his life lived in vain or lost early while basking in the rays of such a friendly sun? Certainly not me. I looked upon Gen Genda. Genda. I keep saying Genda now. He was meditating, as always. Now he definitely never gets any unnecessary doubts. I remembered my first hours in this camp the, and the day before, the anguish, the anxiety, and fear. That all seems so far away now, although so little time has passed. Will I get out of here or not? It didn't concern me as much as before. Maybe I'm already dead. Then this is the last stop. Please get off the train. What are you thinking about? I looked up and saw that pioneer I'd seen before. I couldn't see his face again as the sun was all was shining in my eyes. You know, life. It seemed he would sit next down next to me, but the pioneer stayed in the same place, only half turned, which completely killed any hope of seeing his face. Listen, have we met earlier? I don't think I remember you. Well, let's say that you know who I am. But I don't. I laughed sincerely. Here, you don't. His answer... He answered short. I see. Honestly, it's not like I didn't want to talk. I just didn't know what to talk about. And my soul was so calm, this didn't bother me. Your first time here? He asked a question, but his tone implied he was only expecting a confirmation. Yes, and you? Me. He paused for a few seconds. Nah, it's not my first time here. One might say that I've visited this camp every year since my early childhood. Such an answer got me in interested. Well, and what was it like before? It's always the same. Olga being the camp leader, all the same pioneers around, all the same lineups in the morning, all these wicked accidents. For a moment I thought that it was me speaking, not him. Interesting. It's just that with every new, he hesitated, year, more and more interesting things happen and one gets to understand better what's going on. What are you talking about? This conversation positively triggered my curiosity. It's a pity that I can't distinguish the face of this pioneer at all. Well, every season the in the pioneer camp reminds of the previous one, he said calmly. Probably. This is my first. It shows. The pioneer grinned. But it looks like it won't be the last. Well, it's fun here and all, but... You know how they say, there's no place like... Um? But you still have to get back there. Now I was absolutely sure that this guy was hiding something from me. To be precise, he stood out too much from the camp's usual orderliness, and was too different from the local inhabitants. What do you mean? You think I'm stuck here forever or something? I said, enunciating every word. Pioneer had no time to answer as the lunch bell sounded. I turned my head towards the loudspeaker, but and by the time I looked back, the guy was already gone. Thousands of theories and speculations instantly appeared in my mind, but I stopped myself, remembering all the apparent abnormality of this camp. After all, nothing supernatural has happened in these five days. Moreover, everything here seemed too natural, sometimes even boring. Maybe this pioneer didn't mean anything by that, and I just misunderstood him. Thinking that, I went to the canteens, intending to feast. Sometimes it seemed to me that lunch here is akin to the crowds around the soup kitchens during a famine. Pioneers were running around, pushing each other, trying to cr crawl through for the first meal and take the most comfortable table. I was calmly standing and patiently waiting for the cook to get me my assigned food rations. For lunch today, we had okrashak, okrashak, okrash, okrashka, which I didn't really like, and cutlets with potatoes. Okrashka is a traditional Russian cold soup. I sat in a corner and mentally rejoiced that I will be able to eat in peace. My table was the furthest from the kitchen. I could reasonably hope that the pioneers who were looking for a free place wouldn't reach it, or would reach it last. However, when I moved on to the main course, Slavia, Shurik, and Electronique appeared from the crowd. Can we? I had nothing against their company. Of course. 
Lunch was going surprisingly calmly. Even Electronique wasn't jabbering as he usually does. I finally finished the meal, sprawled in my chair, and satisfied, clicked my tongue. Listen, do you know this pioneer? I saw him today. You know, he's so... I suddenly realized that I didn't really know how to describe him. Well, about my height. Same constitution. Hard to say from such a description. Sliva smiled. Well, we have half a camp of such guys, if it comes to that. All in all, they were right. Why are you asking? It's just that I met him today, and it seems like I haven't seen him before. Look in the canteen. I don't think you'll miss lunch. Why didn't I think of that? That's it. Okay, guys, enjoy your meal. I got up and started to slowly walk along the rows of tables. Lena and Xenia were sitting over there. I gave them a friendly smile. Alyssa and Yolanda were laughing and arguing about something. Olga, surrounded by pioneers. Good thing she didn't notice me. There are hardly any free seats, but the guy from this morning is nowhere to be seen. The situation is getting more and more interesting. Looks like I won't find him here. Maybe he already had lunch. I headed to the exit. It was so hot outside that it seemed like you would instantly melt after coming out of the shade. I suddenly felt like sleeping. I yawned and headed to the camp leader's cabin in order to follow the domestic inter interpretation of Archimedes' principle. In the end, Olga is unlikely to return anytime soon, at least I think so, and I will definitely have a couple of hours to rest. Anyways, I really don't expect any other options to, to arise, especially in this heat. Wow, you gave up looking for him pretty fast. The heavenly coolness in the cabin became my salvation. I took my clothes off and jumped into bed. Crickets were lazily chirping outside. The wind was shaking the curtains on the window and I sank into a dream. Hmm. Knocking on the door woke me up. The knocks were soft but insistent. I reluctantly got up and went to open it. Strangely, there was nobody on the doorstep. I rubbed my eyes and stepped out to look around. All the same, no one around. A dream, maybe? It was already four o'clock. I felt jaded. I probably shouldn't have slept in the afternoon. After all, we knew what was going to happen. I put on my boots, left the cabin, and locked the door. But where shall I go? All in all, there's not much time till dinner. A sudden thought came to me that it would be nice to refresh myself, so I went towards the beach. The sun has passed the midday mark a while ago. It gets dark early here in the south. I squinted and looked up at the flaming disk. What was that just now? I flinched. The same mysterious guy was standing in front of me, and once again his voice was hard to see. His face was hard, hard to see due to the bright light. For a moment the sun blinded me so I could not see anything besides the faint contours of objects. Are you stalking me? No, nope, I was just passing by, he answered calmly. Then you should know better. So you haven't seen anyone? Correct. Uh. I rubbed my eyes, but it did not help. Why didn't I see you at lunch? I asked him bluntly. I wasn't hungry. He laughed. I blinked a few times and my vision came back, but the pioneer had miraculously disappeared once again. What the hell is going on here? Now I was absolutely sure that there was something strange about that guy. He must be directly related to everything happening around here. I'll have to find out. But for starters, it's good to confirm that I'm not mistaken and that he is not just a local pioneer. It was quite crowded at the beach. Looked like everyone from the camp was here. Well, no wonder. So hot outside. Olga was standing just a bit further apart from everyone, keeping an eye on her army of pioneers. As soon as I thought that coming here might not have been the best idea, she noticed me. Hey, Simeon! You weren't at the lineup, and in general, you're just lounging around all day. I did not know how to answer. And just how are you planning on becoming a proper pioneer? She continued more softly. Olga, in the camp, is there a pioneer who looks a lot like me? She looked surprised. Maybe? I don't know. Why do you ask? Oh, I'm just curious. Well, we have a lot of boys here. 
All right, never mind. Someone's yell came from the riverside and Olga rushed in its direction. Well, looks like I'll, I will be spared a lecture. I lowered myself onto the sand and stared at the pioneers playing in the water. After a few minutes of sitting here, Yolanda approached me. Why so sad? I'm not sad. Well, why are you here sitting all alone? Just thinking. But what? I decided to share her my story about the mysterious pioneer. Well, imagine that you're chatting with a weird person, and you have to figure out what exactly is so weird about them. Simple. I'd just ask them. She laughed. Too simple. But he won't answer. How do you know? Have you tried asking? No, but it's obvious. Yolanda did not answer, just sat down next to me and let out a tired sigh. I'm all swim dead. What if they know something, but won't tell you? Make them. But how? For a bit longer, we sat ta together talking about random things, and then I got up, said goodbye, and went away. It's time to find the mysterious stranger and get all the answers. First place to visit was the bus stop. After all, this is where it all began. The road was empty, as always. Only small dust tornadoes were occasionally visible on it. I was ready to turn around and go back to the camp, but then I heard someone whisper, Don't trust him! Someone was hiding behind the monument. Pioneer was sitting there with his back to me. And once again, the voice seemed strangely familiar. Who are you? I took a few steps towards him. Stop! Don't come any closer! For some reason, I froze in my tracks. From somewhere deep inside, an assurance came to me and I understood that I shouldn't argue with him. All right, I'll stay here. Have you seen him? Talk to him? I asked. Ner he asked nervously. Who are you even talking about? He was dressed in a pioneer uniform. You know who. And I definitely did know. He was talking about the weird pioneer I saw earlier. Yes. I answered after a few moments of silence. What did he tell you? The pioneer asked in a pleading tone. Nothing, really. Did he give you advice? Did he tell you what to do? Threaten you? No, nothing like that. Of course, he seemed pretty weird, but nothing more than that. Remember, remember, he may not be alone, or more likely, he is alone, but you may meet many pioneers here who look like him. What about you? Who are you? Who are you hiding from? You'll understand. In time. Just remember, the most important thing is to find the exit. All of a sudden, a strong gust of wind came through, ripping leaves from the trees and throwing an old paper bag in my face, shielding myself. I averted my eyes. When I looked back at the monument, the pioneer was already gone. At that moment, I was overwhelmed by fear. Real, almost tangible fear. I remember being scared during my first hours at this camp. But back then, everything around me seemed seemed kind and friendly. Now, Savyonok revealed its fangs, getting ready to eat me. And ahead, the unknown. My body was covered in goosebumps, my throat was dry, and my hands were shaking. I tried to ignore it all and headed back to the camp. It was already dinner time, but I had no desire to go to the canteen. After meeting the second mysterious pioneer, just thinking about the locals made me, if not afraid, then at least creeped out. I don't know who or what they all are, and even though nothing had happened yet, it does not mean I can trust them. I stopped in front of the clubhouse, but then realized that this is not the best spot to be at. I could run into someone, which was not something I wanted to do at the moment. Almost running, I hurried towards the forest and walked a few meters along the path before finally stopping. On one side, the mysterious pioneer, well, two of them to be precise, on the other, all the inhabitants of this camp who seemed absolutely normal. Either way, my decision to stand back and let everyone, everything resolve itself was under some serious pressure. At this point, it was clear to me I had to do something on my own. But what exactly? Everyone's probably having a dinner, so I have a good chance to make it to Olga's place without being noticed. I decided to first take my clothes that I wore when I arrived here along with my cell phone won't be able to come up with a solid plan right off the bat, so for the time being, I might as well hide in the forest. I leaped up the stairs and entered the building. My clothes were right where I left them, and my phone was where it was supposed to be, under my pillow. 
I quickly grabbed it and was ready to stuff it into my pocket, but then noticed something on the screen. The message window was open. Text read, You're wrong, Semyon. You are so wrong. It felt like my soul had left my body. I froze on the spot. I was shaking, and my blood was pumping so hard it felt like my skull was going to burst open from the pressure. It looked... It took at least a full minute for me to come back to my senses. Olga could have typed in the message, or one of the pioneers. It's easy to figure out how to do it, even if they're not familiar with this technology. But no one besides me should know where I keep the phone. This event was the straw that broke the camel's back. I rushed out of the house, determined never to come back there. Huh. Night fell on the campgrounds. I'd been sitting in the woods for hours, for a few hours, trembling at every noise. The spot that I chose was far away from the path, so it would be hard to find me. I was keeping a few plans in my head for the time being. To try and run, to kill every single person in the camp. <laughs> However, on the, up, on the other hand, one thought chased me and I realized that I shouldn't behave like this because of some strange pioneer, or even because of that message on the phone. All of this was reinforcing the thought that everything happening here was far from normal. However, there was no proof that anyone in the camp had anything to do with it. I could have stayed here until morning, lost in my thoughts, but I heard footsteps coming from somewhere nearby. They so decided to escape after all. I turned around but couldn't see the pioneer's face in the dark. Nevertheless, I was pretty sure that it was him. I wasn't afraid then. More precisely, I was so physically exhausted that I was prepared for any possible course of events and somehow managed to reason appropriately and maintain the conversation. I wouldn't call this an escape. I answered slowly, stretching every word. Huh? Then what is it? A tactical retreat. Brilliant! He burst into laughter. Listen, why don't you tell me what's going on, who are you, and what you want from me? What did that guy tell you at the gate? It seemed that he didn't even hear my question. He told me not to trust you. I lied. But on the other hand, I thought that it was what he meant. Well, that's always the way for him, running away, hiding. I could hear irritation in his voice. I'm not sure what kind of circus you're running here, but I'm not going to be a part of it. Oh, why not? You're the star, after all. I couldn't see his face, but I bet he was smiling. Explain my part to me, then. You know, I was like you in the beginning. First time, everything went peacefully. Then I escaped. I tried to understand what was going on, got mad, and even tortured them to get the truth. He laughed crazily. I shivered. But it was pointless, continued the pioneer after calming down a bit. Pointless. And then I began to notice the lapses. At first I just heard their voices, from a distance and sometimes in my head. Then vague silhouettes appeared. Then they slowly took a f on physical form. And finally they stepped into my world. I could touch them, introduce them to other pioneers. And they were all different. Different. Do you get it? Different. He started shouting. And it recurred again and again. You can get used to the loops, but... Then I learned how to get into their worlds by myself to interact with the others. But it turned out that I'm not alone. There are lots of us. Today we saw at least one more. He fell silent. I didn't know what question to ask and didn't want to interrupt his story, so I simply waited. After a minute he continued. It's not that simple, of course. And it's not always possible. Only under certain circumstances. When you feel strong emotions, for example. I instantly remembered how I saw him the first time, the time when I didn't feel any emotions at all. Including the moments when you feel happy. As if he were reading my thoughts. I see. So you're trying to say that there are several parallel worlds, including the same camp with its inhabitants, where I'm replaced by you or that guy I met at the bus stop? Yeah, something like that. His answer didn't surprise me at all. In the end, it's clear that whatever happens here is beyond the limits of human understanding, and this theory didn't even seem all that unusual. But you've said that everything re recurs? 
Yes, it recurs. And what will happen afterwards? You'll start from the very beginning. You'll wake in the bus, come to the camp, meet Olga, the girls, Electronique. But if it happened to you, then why should it happen to me as well? It happens to everyone. Once again, he laughed hysterically. And how many loops have you experienced so far? I stopped counting them already. At first, I tried to remember them, though. Maybe a few hundred? No wonder it was very clear to me that this guy was suffering from a progress, progressing mental dysfunction. But you searched for a way out, didn't you? He didn't answer. That's what that guy at the bus stop was talking about. Because he understands nothing, damn it. He shouted. Because he's just like you, constantly running away, hiding. What would you suggest, then? If I had any suggestions, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you. All right, but you were trying, weren't you? Are you trying to understand what I know since I've been around here for a long time? He asked cheerfully. Well, that's evident. Yes, I did try to run away from here. There. He waved towards the forest. There's nothing there. Nothing but trees. When I'd been walking there for several days and finally passed out, I found myself in the bus again. Same for walking along the road. It's endless. Talking to somebody about that is pointless. You probably already understood that by now, by yourself. I did. I interjected. Even if you try to explain your situation directly, at best you'll just be considered an idiot. What if you try not to leave the bus? It's pointless. Sooner or later you'll be found. I even tried to spend the entire time there. In the end I fell asleep and everything started from the beginning. And what if you start it by yourself and leave? No keys. And I don't have any carjacking skills. A, cur a cursed cycle. Exactly. A long silence fell. Finally I asked, what about the people around here? Don't they raise absolutely reasonable suspicions? Suspicions? Laughter again. The only thing that's suspicious about them is that no matter how much you tell them, they stare at you with their eyes out on stocks. The people. I feared them at first, too. Then I used them for different experiments. And now I don't consider them humans. They're all dolls, puppets. You can easily predict any reaction, any word or action. So they aren't worth fearing, are they? The one worth fearing is yourself, he said softly. Do you know how funny it is when human bones crack as they slowly break from distension? Looks like he's finally lost his marbles. Listen, I understand everything, but the other one thinks that's a bit much too. But it doesn't matter. Nobody but you is real here. The pioneer si suddenly fell silent. Well, no, I don't agree with you. You're probably thinking, why I didn't check this all myself? Aren't you why I didn't try to reach the nearest village or town? Yes, I did have such thoughts. Why wasn't I suspicious? Why was I doing different stuff instead of searching for answers? Well, yes. Forget about it. That's normal. We all behave like this for the first time here. But how many others have you seen so far? Not that many. The pioneer was lost in thought. About ten people, maybe. But I'm sure there are many more of them. And? Is everyone... like this? In fact, yes. Only the details are different, but the main thing is invariable. There is no way out of here. And by the way, you're just like the majority of them. The only thing that differs is that you have heard everything from me instead of experiencing it for yourself. I don't know if I should thank him for that. Well, and what now? Nothing. He said shortly. I closed my eyes and lost myself in thought. That was a critical mistake. Well, when I opened my eyes, I didn't see anybody, just like the previous times. So it's clear what's going on now. But in fact, how could everything he said guide me to an answer? Yes, I'm not alone. Yes, everything recurs. But what's the reason for all this? And what is more important? Where's the way out? The only useful thing that I extracted from the conversation was that the local inhabitants are not worth fearing. 
and that was quite sufficient for me now since I was much better to sleep in a warm cabin instead of the forest. I sighed, took my things, and headed towards the camp. As I was walking, the conversation with my fellow sufferer popped up in my mind every now and then. Why did I, did I not ask him about the message on my phone, and some other stuff? There were hints, after all. Maybe if I'd found some details out, I could have drawn some conclusions. However, it didn't seem like our meeting would be the last one. The lights were on in Olga's cabin. I opened the door gently and went in. Speak of the devil, here you are, the camp le leader said angrily. Olga, I'm so tired now, so let's put off the lecture. Tired from what, I wonder? From everything, I snapped rudely. The camp leader took, looked at me with surprise. I fell into bed without undressing. Semyon, a role model pioneer, shouldn't behave like that. And how should he behave then? Well, not like that. <laughs> the camp leader stumbled for a moment as if struggling to pick the right words. He should respect his seniors. I respect you immensely, for sure. Samian. The sarcasm in my voice didn't go unnoticed. And now I'd like to sleep. Wait, I... By the way, how far is the nearest town? When does the bus arrive? How can I even get out of here? I asked in a surprisingly calm voice. There was no answer, and there shouldn't have been any. I said all this just in order to get rid of her. Why are you silent? I'm tired. Let's talk about that tomorrow. The camp leader got up and turned off the light. Yes, it's just like that guy said. Why did I speak to him so calmly and properly, I wonder? I should have been shivering from horror. That pioneer didn't have much credibility, but I had a feeling that he's unable to harm me. As soon as I thought that it would be a good idea to ask something else, fatigue overtook me and I passed out. He seems to be like really overpowered with exhaustion right now. Maybe all our answers will be found on day seven. Maybe it's only a week long thing. I guess we'll find out in the next episode. Thanks very much for watching.